in our video blogs we have covered workgroup versus domain active directory dns dhcp and windows server so let's go ahead and cover windows operating systems such as windows 10 and 11 because right now if you want to become an it support professional or even if you're working with users at any level they're going to be using client which is operating system such as windows 10 or 11 so we're going to focus on that by using our sandbox lab you can click on the sandbox lab when you click on the video right below there's a button launch the lab or you can go to the practice lab and open 2019 sandbox i am going to use this approach so i'm going to go ahead and click on practice and i'm going to type sandbox 2019 is the one that we're looking for i'm going to go ahead and open so let's go ahead and launch the lab and from the diagram you already know a lot of the you know setup in this type of sandbox so what are we covering today we're covering the operating system which is windows 10 right here so when we have domain member which is connected to active directory and at this point you know what i'm talking about when i say active directory if you're not sure please go back to our uh, other uh, labs for example when you go to the video blogs and make sure to cover all of these uh, blogs before you take this video then now if you already know what this means when i say domain member it's this machine connected to active directory and then we have a standalone machine which is basically not connected to active directory you can call this one managed and you can call standalone unmanaged so in your lab we can go ahead and hide that left side panel and what we want to work today is to work on these two different clients so let's go ahead and turn it on plab win 10 plab 101 so there could be two scenarios when you start working as an IT professional. One, let's for example, PLAB Win 10, which is already joined to the domain. This could be a user who's already working in a company and they're using Windows 10 and it's already joined to the domain. This means they're already logging into their Active Directory account and they open Outlook and different applications and things like that. So you have to try to troubleshoot a system which is already connected to the domain. So keep that in your mind because when you become an IT professional, you don't just create everything from scratch because you learn it in the courses. You go in because things are already working and things can may not be working. So you, you could have, be handling two different type of skills over here. So keep in mind that a machine could be already on the Active Directory when they call you. So in this example, if somebody is already a part of Active Directory and they call you, then you need to go back to your Active Directory skills. Maybe they're having issues with the password, access, or some other issues. So keep that in mind. And these are the things that you learn from our courses. So I'm not going to go in, into extreme detail because that's why you have roadmaps in our courses. When you take a whole roadmap, you become a, you you spend almost 94 hours worth of energy to learn these things so i'm not going to go into extremely details but let's cover some of the basics here so this machine in your case let's say this is a company and somebody's using this machine they are part of active directory so how, where's active directory in your lab if you want to practice a little more you can go back to plab dc01 and you can go ahead and open active directory just like this open server manager and let's go ahead and open Active Directory and Active Directory users and computers. So let's verify which computer is actually on Active Directory. So if I click on my computers right here, this is the Win 10 is already here. You see, this person, this machine is not on Active Directory. So in reality, what could this be? This could be a laptop laying in a storeroom in your company right now. And they say, hey, we got a new person joining our organization and there's this new laptop in the storage. Can you go ahead and configure it? So when you turn that laptop on, maybe it already have a default operating system, which you turn it on and it just opens with the admin username and password. Or maybe you will say create an admin username and password. So it could be extremely from scratch or it could be something that people have already done it before you and then you just open that laptop and then you will ask your coworkers that 
what is the username and password if it shows admin and username if it doesn't show and it starts with total scratch type of setup then you will still ask them okay is there any procedure that we need to follow to configure our machines for our employees so keep this in your mind because when you become an IT professional that's how you basically come across things it's not like everything you go in there and you just have every single thing you have to start from scratch and, and none of that will happen actually 90% of the time you are going to go into a company which is already functioning and everything is running so keep all of these scenarios in your mind right now and then approach learning these skills from these type of videos so if our goal is to work on the plab win 10 which is already connected to the active directory then we already know that this computer somebody have already joined it to the domain and a user have already logged into this machine using active directory accounts many other scenarios so for your learning you can go back to active directory here and then you can basically create an account in active directory let's go ahead and create one account right now and we'll call it stacy so let's just do stacy and create a password and log in make sure you uncheck the user must change the password and then go ahead and add the password and that's it so we have created stacy right now in our active directory so from your learning so far from the previous videos you know what this means stacy can log into plab win 10 machine because plab win 10 is already added to active directory it's being managed so stacy can log in stacy can log into any machine that is being a part of active directory so how can you test this you can go and click on these three dots and remove the automatic login and this is where i love the console mode because it's basically shows you exactly like you're sitting in front of that machine then so when you do console mode it's going to show like this you do other users and you're going to do stacy and log in with the account that you just created so what you just did you have created an active directory account and then you went ahead you open plab win 10 laptop desktop whichever wherever this is in your company you logged in with stacy's account and boom it started to work so you know that your active directory skills is on top because things are working now you must be wondering can i just go to plab win 101 and do the same thing i'm going to click on these three dots right here and i'm going to uncheck it and i'm going to click on console and i got the same screen perfect but whoa what's going on over here i cannot log in as stacy because it's just one account so if you are in this stage right now if like like you're doing this like okay i don't understand what just happened this means you lack a fundamental skills that you need to go back to our courses and take the modern it support course like right here you need to actually go through this training because somebody have to teach you what is a local work group accounts versus active directory accounts and you got to go through all this learning you it's, it's just it's like a it's like a little check mark for you right now you should stop here you should go back to your membership because you have access and take these courses because this is extremely basic stuff and that's how when you go to a company they may have 100 200 or 50 laptops laying in their storage room and it will be like this so if you don't know what this is then you're lacking something big but I'm still going to cover some of the basics even in this video so you have some knowledge. So right now you know that this machine was not a part of Active Directory. It's just a work group computer, not managed. And that's the first account that somebody have created and left it for us. Or if I could have started this machine from scratch, maybe Dell sent me this, HP sent me this, or Lenovo or these big companies sent me a hardware and as soon as I turn it on, it just says set up your first account. And when I set it up, I see this, like I set up this for the first time. So the password over here, we are given here in the, in this little eye icon. This is the password right here. You can always use this. So I can come over here and put the password just like that. So now we are inside this machine as a local admin account has nothing to do with Active Directory.
So what does this example have to do with operating system skills? Well, the reason is very simple. If you don't know how to manage workgroup machine, it's not easy for you to learn Active Directory stuff. The reason I showed you this, that when you join a company, it's going to be both ways. They're going to be either connected to the Active Directory or you're going to have a bunch of laptops that you need to configure from scratch. So if you don't know how to do the scratch part, then it's really hard for you to land an IT support job or to work as an IT support professional because you just don't know how to manage things from the scratch and you can't just go to something more advanced. Um, you know, that's just not how it works. So my focus in this video is going to be first PLAP Win 11 101 Win 101 which is Windows 10. So whatever I'm showing over here, you can also replicate it in Windows 11 because most of these administrative features are available in Windows 11 as well. You just have to search it. So the first thing that I like to teach in operating system level skills is do you know local accounts? Can you create a local account or can you find that admin account that we just logged in as an IT support professional? This could be an interview question as well. And your answer should be yes. If I right click on the start and if I go to computer management, this is where I can find accounts just like Active Directory computer locally have accounts as well, as long as it's not a domain controller. So you can see it's a local user and groups. Double click on users. This is where your admin account is available to you. So Next question is, can you create an account locally? Yes, you can right click in the white space, right click on the folder, click on new, and then add a new user. So if I do Stacy B and do the same thing I just did in Active Directory, if I quiz you guys right now, can Stacy B log into this machine, P PLAB Win 10, just like what you did over here? If your answer is yes, then you have to go back to our fundamental courses because you failed. You cannot use Stacy B to log into any other machine because she's locally created inside this machine and this machine has nothing to do with Active Directory. But can Stacy B log into this machine now? Yes, you can do a test now. You can go back and what you can do is log out, sign out, just like that. And now if you click here on the screen, you see you got Stacy B available as well. So if Stacy B logs into this machine, she will have a low, uh, normal basic rights. She's not going to be an admin because we didn't define her as an admin. So can you make her an admin? Yes, you can. You can go back to the administrator account and go back to the local account and change her rights to administrator. And that's simple. You can just go back to the settings and open computer management, users, right click on Stacey B, go to properties, and then here, member of, you can add administrators. Just like that. And click apply and okay. Now Stacey is an administrator of this machine. So now you understand that how local accounts work. The next important part of understanding about operating system is to know which version of operating system are you using so how do you find that you can right click go to the settings and here you will see which type of uh, you know edition that you are using inside your company and this is very important because if they're using something different then you should go online google and find out windows 10 pro windows 10 home version whatever they're using enterprise so you should do a little more research and understand whichever your company is using you will need to look into the documentation and see the features of that specific edition what's so special about it why did they choose that or simply ask your coworker or managers why did we choose enterprise versus um professional same with windows 11 you can also do a something like winver you can just type winver just like that and just enter it gives you this box right here. Then it gives you the built information and version 9, 9, 1903. In some cases, if they want to test you, they will say, what is the version number of this operating system? And can you upgrade it to the new one? So it depends. I mean, we're not going to do the upgrade right now, but you can say 9, 1903. And the build is this. And basically, you will go to a Microsoft website for licensing and you will download the ISO and you will 
upgraded or sometimes you can do updates from here which is another skill a lot of people will say how do you update an operating system so you're going to go to check updates like this and basically you're going to run the updates and then check if you are missing any updates now in most companies and you also learn this from our courses you can do updates from networking side like you know you'll have a server and that push updates whether it's a windows server or third-party application it does patching and that can be done for 200, 1000, 2000 machines all at once. So some people use this type of feed. But when you get a fresh operating system, there's no feed, there's no systems. So you got to go and do this manually by coming here, typing Windows update and then running the update. So next you should go ahead and search more about updates. How does Windows updates work? How does Windows feature work? So that's up to you if you want to do a little more learning on top of updates that is locally happening to this computer. So once you have system updated, then of course, after that, you will start setting up the computer for users. Now, usually in companies, if you are hired as an IT support professional, most likely it is going to be domain joint computers. So the first thing you need to do after finishing some of the basics, like updating, putting some uh, you know specific software that does not require to be on Active Directory yet, so you will kind of talk about it with your coworkers, and they will tell you exactly what to do. But let's suppose you name this computer, you updated it. The next step in most cases, in most companies, you will join this computer to the domain, which is another skill. Someone can ask you, do you know how to add a client or an operating system like Windows 10 or Windows 11 to a Active Directory? How do you do that? So you simply go to uh, system here and you're going to scroll down and then you're going to click on system info. This is where you're going to see a lot more information. And here you see that your computer is on work group. Again, this is something you will learn more in courses, but in, in our previous blogs, we have covered this area as well. So to join this computer to the domain, you will click on change settings. And here you're going to click on change. Here you'll click on domain and you will type the domain address. So you see it's going to prompt you. So once you, it prompts you, then you will type the username and the password that is added to Active Directory. So this person who is going to do this part is going to be already a power user, such as help this. So in this case, we are going to use the administrator password or administrator account that we get, were given in this lab, which you can find by clicking a you know um, on top of this eye icon. But you have to use administrator, not admin, because administrator is a part of Active Directory, not admin. There's a local account. So if I click OK, what's going to happen? It's going to go out there and it's going to join this machine as well to the Active Directory. And when I restart this machine. Let's go ahead and do a restart and make sure that your console uh, option is checked, not the automatic option. So once you have the console option checked and when you restart this machine, what's going to happen? You're going to see this machine also being managed by Active Directory. So now this is how the normal process works because you get a machine as a work group that has nothing to do with Active Directory. Then you put it on Active Directory. That's where your skill set or your skills are going to be tested because then you do a lot of other things once it's joined to the domain. Other than that, it's just a normal operating system. It has it has basically no value in a business area where like it's just a personal device where you can uh, you know, by yourself. It has nothing to do with your management. So if I click here, you see how I got the other users now. And now I can use Stacy account that we have created in Active Directory and it will still work on this machine as well. She never logged into this machine, but still it will work because Stacy is a part of Active Directory. This machine is also a part of Active Directory. So the skill that you just learned is that how do you add an operating system or client to the domain? And you just did that. But in most cases, what happens is that a domain will lose its connection, trust relation, or maybe something messy happened. And now for some reason, when you log in with your domain username and password, it doesn't work. So as a technician, how do you log into this operating system to fix this issue? Because you cannot use a domain username and password. It's not going to work here. 
So that's where you're going to have to think and ask this question to yourself. How do you get into this machine to fix it now? Do you Can you go back to this machine and unjoin it now? You, you learned the skill of joining, but did you learn the skill of unjoining to fix it? And how would you do that? So I mean, in most cases, you're not going to see this admin account just like this. It's actually going to, when you log in, this is going to go away and it's not going to show like this. So to log in two ways, you first need to make sure that you know the username and the password for this machine. And that's why understanding a local operating system at local level is so important because right now, without that, you could not fix this issue. Unless you're so advanced that you can break into the username and password, which we're not going to cover. But other than that, you don't know. You're stuck. What if this is a CEO and they needed to get this fixed in 30, sec 30 minutes? So what would you do? You need to know the skill. How do you get into this machine locally now? So if I come over here and I don't have this capability, I don't see this admin user, so how would I get it? The first thing is to, do you remember the name of this machine? So one way is if you remember the name, you can just type PLAB Win 101. But let's be honest, how many times we're gonna remember the name? I mean, most of the times we don't put something on the laptop. Some people do, maybe they don't. So if you don't know the name, then it's not easy to find it. So you're gonna type dot slash like that. As soon as you do this, you're gonna see the name on the bottom right there. So that is the name. And then you can type the, the admin user and the password and just log in directly to that machine locally to fix the issue where your domain username and password are not working. Now you will locally inside in this machine, unjoin this machine from the domain and rejoin it again. And usually that fixes most of that type of issues when the domain login is not working in an operating system. And unjoining is the same way. You just go back to the systems and you go to the system info and you see how it's joined to the domain. You have to remove it now by going there and change and clicking work group and you're just going to type work group you could type anything but usually people type, just type work group like that and then once you do this it's going to ask you do you want to remove this machine from the domain yes and it's going to go out there and give you the username and password again so we're going to type administrator this is the active directory account and now we have unjoined this machine from the domain and when it restarts it's going to be back to work group again so now it's not managed anymore you see you learn how to manage it you learn how to unmanage it all right so now let's get back to the operating system and let's see what else we can learn as a local operating system so when you have a local operating system logged in there are certain things that are uh, available in all of these operating systems such as 10 and 11 and the first one I'm going to I'm going to talk about is basically the task manager. So the task manager is usually available by right clicking here and then you are going to see task manager. You can also search for task manager by just typing task manager just like that and open task manager. And in Windows 11 10 it's almost the same way you're going to do more details here. A little bit uh you know design could have a differences but if you come over here these are processes. Now, every time you open application and in the background, Microsoft, uh, you know, uh, Windows have a lot of processes that are running. So sometimes what happens is that when you open Outlook, Word, Excel, or things like that, or a user opens and they start complaining that I clicked on Outlook, but it's not opening. And they keep, keep clicking on it, but it's not coming up. In most cases, you can come over here, warn the user that, hey, I'm going to try to, you know, shut down the service. And without restarting, you will be able to reopen it if everything look, um, goes well. But just a warning, if you have any document that you may lose that, is it okay for me to do that? So you can come over here and you see the Outlook is running. You clicked on it like 10 times, it's not coming up. You can right click on it and kill that, end that task. But of course you don't wanna do this with things that are already running here. And if you don't know about it, don't kill it. If you still want to kill something, make sure to just do your research on Google before you do that. Because if you may right click and end task is totally like, you know, kick you out from whatever you're doing and it just shut, shut it down. Or let's say uh, your whole operating system gets corrupted because you did something unexpected. So yeah, keep in mind that these are a little advanced stuff. But in most cases, things will be okay if it's just an application like Outlook, Word, Excel, 
with the warning, you can go ahead and try that type of solution if things are not working. So this is processes. Make sure to go over internet and Google and find from Microsoft what they tell or they talk about task manager from their perspective. You're going to learn a lot. The second one is performance. You can come to the performance and check the CPU. Usually, um, a lot of people ask me this question. How do we find CPU name or what type of CPU did I have in my laptop? Or let's say the company laptops. How do we find that? Simply click on performance, click on CPU, and here is the detailed information about your CPU. It will tell you exactly which one is it. And also it will give you some information on the bottom that how many virtual processes it will have, speed and things like that. So of course, the, the rest is up on you. If you want to do research on specific CPU, there are so many, that would be up to you how much you want to research on that CPU. Same with the memory. You can come over here, click on memory, and you will find out how much memory do you have in this machine, how much is in use. Sometimes the memory could be very high. And then why is that happening? You can go back to the processes and see which application is killing all the, the memory. So here you can check on the right side here, memory, CPU. So these two works together. So this is like a, a, main, a main view for you where you can check if things are very high and then you can come over here and by memory, you can check which one is the highest right here. So this way, if an application that like Skype, Teams or things like that is just eating 90% without you even using it, that there's some sort of problem with that, then you got to fix it, update it, restart it, uninstall it, reinstall it, things like that will be your solutions to fix that. Sometimes a user might complain that when I start a computer and I didn't do anything and the Teams comes up, Skype comes up, and application just comes up and I don't want it. Usually, maybe sometimes it's in the startup. So you have to come to the startup and here you're going to right click on it and then disable that application if you don't want it to start up because it may be eating a lot of memory and taking a lot of time for a user to start their computer in the beginning. So this could be one place to check in Task Manager. Then you can also come to the users and check the admin and users and, and information about the users as well over here. And if they're using any applications, you can also check what kind of application they're running. You could have two people logged into the same machine um, if they're doing a remote desktop type of thing, especially in the servers that happens. And details, uh, you have application details that's that's available right here. You can um, basically right click on it and kind of like end task from here. Set priority. There's This is for more advanced users. You don't have to do a lot as an IT support professional, but sometimes if you're working in a very advanced company that do a lot of troubleshooting, then you may have to come over here. Service is a very common area where you may have to come here because a lot of companies use services for specific reasons. On the servers, a lot of time we use services. In the applications or in the desktop world, not so many uh, tickets will be related to services, but maybe someone will say, hey, we got this special application and then for that application, you need to go to the services and you need to right click on it. You go to the service and then you need to open that. And then this is the services that will open the main area of services. So you can also go to the search and search services just like that and open services. And here they may say that you need to run a service as a user. Uh, restart a service, stop a service, things like that can happen here. Or you can go to properties and you can see log on and you will have to run a service as a specific user. So these are the things that if someone say stop a service, restart a service, run a service as a user, stop a service totally, make sure it does not get automatically restarted. Everything will happen from here. So take some time here and then learn a little more about services as well. The next important skill that you should learn on local operating system uh, is installing applications and uninstalling and repairing application. This could be a common thing for you, especially when you're dealing with Office 365, Excel, and things like that, or maybe a custom application or corporate applications. Usually, they will give you the file and you will just run it. So you should always just go there, just type uninstall, and you can just type uninstall and you will see add or remove, or you can even type add and remove. And once you come over here, add and remove, you will see the old application that are installed on this uh, on this operating system, whether, whether it's this or Windows 11 will show in add and remove. And this way you can also come by checking in local C drive, all drive, 
and you can do the by name you can search it over here and once you click on that application then you can uninstall it so for example we have skype you can see i have uninstall option and i have advanced option as well so sometimes it will have repair option or reset option so go over these options because i can guarantee you you're going to come across a scenario where a user will complain about a specific application and then you will be able to either repair it reset it or totally uninstall it and reinstall it to fix that issue or you may have to totally change the whole computer that really happens in company so microsoft gives you a lot of information like terminate repair reset uninstall there's a lot that you can do and my recommendation would be just go ahead install office 365 on this machine or any other machine uh sorry not your local machine because you're going to mess it up uh in the lab machines if you have home lab machines then try to do that repair it uninstall it reset it do these things with this type of application so you get more confident and then you also have apps and features now apps and features uh when you come over here basically let's let's just go back here and let's go up a little bit you see we have this optional features so if i click on it if let's say somebody say that we need a different type of feature in this computer sometimes microsoft uh, will give you the, those features and you have to actually come here and click on add feature and then you have to add either language fonts or rsat active directory tools and services and things like that will be like group policy active directory domain and services where you can use active directory like username and passwords and you can do all that stuff from this computer as well server manager there's so much you can do to add over here so this is another place that you can come and play around with this computer another common thing that you may come across is default apps this is where a user call you and say hey i'm opening pdf but it's not opening in the correct application or it's not working this means that maybe the default application for that specific file type is not set so you can come here and do the reset you can click on choose default apps by file when you click on it it will open a very big list and then you can choose a specific file for specific application and then every time a user click on it it's going to open that file you see how you have so many right here so then for pdf you can pick a pdf for png or you know mp3 different different type of application have a capability where microsoft already automatically picks everything for you but in some cases this may not work so you have to come over here in this section to fix it for that specific application next you should invest some time on how remote desktop work in uh, operating system because if you think about it a lot of people will be remoting into their machines or maybe a it hub disk will need to remote into their machines so you need to know where the remote uh, settings are available in operating system so you can right click on the start menu windows 10 go to settings and on the left side you see here we have a remote desktop available so in most cases this will be enabled and then there's show settings where you can see uh, what type of uh, settings that you are uh, you know company would like you to uh, follow because sometimes a computer need to be running for almost all the time 24 7 or maybe there are some power settings going on for that as well because if your computer is shut down then remote desktop will not work so coming over here and then kind of going over these advanced settings knowing what this means allowing connections and some companies they may have specific or custom solutions for remote desktop solutions so please make sure to take some time and check what your company is using if you can see the remote desktop connection here you can also click on settings just like this and go to the advanced settings and this will be the same for windows 11 just do a little research when you're doing that because the screen may be different click on system info and on the left side you see there is this uh, remote desktop setting available so here this is a little older method but though it's still available to us as you can see you will click on remote desktop allow the desktop and some companies they may do permissions maybe they will select users or groups so you will need to figure that out in your company if it's still not uh you know something that is kind of hard for you to find remember to always use the search by typing remote just like that and here you have a remote desktop application but this is where the settings is available to you so remote desktop connection is what you're going to use to connect to the computers 
or they may be using some other methods as well but this is a just old school method for testing or interview purpose they may just take that in front of you and they will say okay type the computer name here and connect to the remote machine and once you type the computer name and if it doesn't connect then you need to figure that out just like i showed you the settings you need to go into that machine and figure out the settings so if i do this you see how it's doing remote desktop connection to this machine so if you put the username and password it's going to connect to this machine and if it doesn't work then of course you need to go back and enable these settings right here maybe it's disabled after remote desktop settings you should spend some time with how the network works inside the computers so make sure to click on plab win 101 and come down to the remote open remote and internet settings once you click on it this is where you will see the remote connections or the adapter connections for the device so in most cases you may be working with adapter which you can click on change adapter option here and this is where you may be uh, you need to know how this works where you have the remote ethernet adapter you can go to property in properties you may be working with ipv4 where you are going to click on properties and maybe a company will ask you to put a static ip address for a machine so when somebody say can you add a static ip address to the machine this is what they're talking about by coming to the ethernet session uh, section ipv4 and then putting the ip subnet default gateway and the dns in the specified option in some cases you may also click on advanced and they will ask you to add an ip address to the machine or to the server or a gateway or another dns and this could be little advanced stuff but you may be working on this as well if they ask you to do this now in most cases they will have documentation and maybe someone will guide you for the first time so you will know this but by your doing your own research on where to change the ip address where to put it on dhcp and things like that will make uh, a lot of help for in your learning when you go to properties and if someone say put this machine on dhcp it should be getting automatically all these ip addresses then you need to make sure that you obtain ip address automatically by clicking here and then it will get ip addresses automatically but in our labs we are using static ip addresses so please do not change these addresses or you'll lose connections next in some cases you may be working with the disk management so by right clicking on the on the start menu or finding disk management in the search if you type or click on disk management here you will see all of your disks that are available inside your operating system in some cases you may be adding a disk or you may be uh, doing partitions with the disk so of course it's a little, it's a little more advanced and that is something you can learn from our courses you can go ahead and check those courses out but in most cases you are going to come here and activate the disk or extend the disk or maybe um, you know do a lot of things with the disk right here by right clicking on it shrinking it changing the letter opening the disk by clicking here it opens the whole disk so things like that you may be coming across to work on it so with this let's go ahead and click on this pc this is where all of your disks will show up so if you are new to a company and you started working make sure you open a generic machine that a users are using and click on it to this pc and see what they're using so if they're using multiple disks this means they have something special going on and you should ask them what is this d about what is the e about i see this in all of our computers all of our employees computer have d e f disk what does this mean so they will have to tell you that next work on mapping a drive by right clicking on this pc and click on map a drive and this is something you also learn from our courses on how to add a map drive shared drives and things like that because in some companies they may be using a shared network or shared drive for companies to do their work so you will be able you will be getting calls like i need to map a drive please help me out so in windows 11 windows 10 uh, you can find out from Windows 11 by right-clicking in Windows 11 do your research and there's a ways you can do this uh, mapping as well now lastly you should work on the documentation as well like you know go to the machine create some documents remove some documents and recover from the recycle bin things like that these are normal practices by users add a new browsers troubleshoot browsers inside computers there are many things that you can do of course after this it's up to you find some online documentation from microsoft online videos and then use these devices that you have access right here to learn more about windows 10 operating system lastly if you are a premium member and you would like to practice on a brand new windows 11 
operating system and you think do we have any availability you can actually open this lab by going to practice lab type endpoint or just like this md-102 and open this lab now you don't have to follow the left side modules because you're just learning about the operating system and not following the material so it's not going to be supported what you're doing but you should at least get to the brand new operating system so go ahead and launch it if the screen is like this go ahead and hide that left side because we're not uh, learning from the course so this operating system is a brand new windows 11 operating system so whatever you have learned from this video you can do the same processes and learn from windows 11 as well try to uh, learn as much as you can you can also open a hyper v which also have a windows 11 and other windows 11 running inside hyper v so you got two windows 11 if you want to add a third one you can create a new one by creating a virtual machine and then running an iso which is available inside the c drive so if you click here and whenever you are looking for the iso you can double click on the c drive and this is the iso so you got a lot of uh, you know opportunities as a member to practice on different type of operating systems but do remember that whatever you're doing in this video is custom and that is not supported by this support what they support is the learning material right here on the left side and this is something that if you're learning about the operating system then i'm not going to recommend you just lose your focus then you should go back to the roadmaps click on the roadmaps and continue the roadmap format of re learning the correct way because everything is in sequence you don't want to jump into more advanced labs and and getting yourself confused with such a big access you should do it in a in a sequence so then you're are not stressed and you're moving in your career the correct way and that's how you learn things um, without any stress thank you